Okay, Patrick, we're going to get started with tearing down your your bullhead. So, going to do a few things first. We're going to take your bracelet off and uh, get your case opened up. Somebody has put the wrong sized. <laughs> Sometimes that just happens. People don't know what size end links to put or uh, spring bars to put in. They put ones that are too long. We'll make sure to get you the right length before we get back to you. Boy, it can be tough though. Tough to get them out. Okay. Now that that's happened, let's go ahead and work on some case, case back here. May have to put this on a machine to get this off. Yeah. All right. I'll be back again. Okay. That was all we needed. A little bit of encouragement. Off it goes. Okay. So let's take a look inside your case back. Do not see any marks that look like a service mark. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a few pieces off. Okay, I'm gonna take your winding weight. Movement looks pretty good. It's a little hazy, but, um, you know, for movement that's been unserviced, it uh, certainly doesn't look bad. Oops. I don't think there's been any real water in here. You can see there's a little bit that wanted to get in up here, but your very rigid case back seal has kept most things at bay. So we can apply. <laughs> that is a piece of plastic, for sure. So you can see where the water has tried to make some inroads here. We'll uh, take that off in a moment. All right, let's go ahead and get your bearings here. A little loose on these screws. They're not terribly bad. The nice thing about a movement that hasn't been fooled with is that the important parts have been left alone, like the hairspring, other pieces, some grease there. Ooh, it's old, old grease. All right, go ahead and take your stem out. Oh, seals are rock solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. As expected. Ooh, some good stuff. All right. It's amazing how small these movements, which aren't small, look compared to these cases, which are quite big. All right, let's have a look. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is if there is anything inside of your hole. So it doesn't look, it looks like there's some dirt perhaps, but Take a close look at your hand here. Make sure that there's nothing residing in here. Um, I can certainly get rid of crud. I want to be sure. Okay, so we'll check that out very closely. Otherwise, it's a really clean dial. You got one, one sort of. Thing here on the surface. 
you know, like we had said, this the loom itself is a little dark. Um, it's not really something I can do much about. Um, I can't bring back loom, but I think that, you know, with the patina on the case, you're going to have a new crystal, so you'll certainly see it inside the watch much better. But with the case patina and the age and all of that, I think we leave it, if I'm honest. I think it just is so honest as a watch that putting it back together with its original look is probably better than not, in my opinion. And I think you share that too. So we'll do that. That will be the, the MO for this watch. Keep it, keep it original. don't see very many of these um, black uh, bullheads. Generally the brown style. This is the second one I've worked on in a while in a little while. They're certainly cool. I wish I had one. I don't have one. <laughs> I have the brown, but not the black. I want to take a look at this a little bit of dial crud. I don't want to mess with this too much, but we can we can see if we can clean that up just a little bit. I think it may dissolve in some distilled water. It really doesn't look like it's eaten eaten anything. Okay. All right, so now what we can do is we can check your dial for any markings on the back, which should be there, of course. Okay, so we got a 4-4 on the back of your dial and a 4-6 on the back of your case. Perfect. Very nice, a nice little comma there. <laughs> Cute. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, this is a good looking movement, I have to say. It's really quite nice. Everything looks good. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to start with the teardown process. All right, Patrick, we're going to go ahead and get everything torn down here. remarkable how these things still run after you know a lifetime of <laughs> use but without much lubrication left I mean it's incredible to me just the you know, the tolerances are pretty good they're not they're not uh, Swiss tolerances and I think that's why they probably do run uh, so well they can run non lubricated out. Take out your pallet fork and have a good look at it.
a little, a little gluey sticking a bit. Okay. Let's take a look at these jewels at the ends here. It's got some wear, but not terrible. Okay. Flying. Where, where was that screw? Oh, goodness. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, I thought we had unscrewed it. Turns out that broke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, hmm. That's a problem. I gotta find a post there. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can get that out. We'll see. All right, we got other things to do before we get there. But that's certainly not not ideal. So that screw has broken off in that stud. I think that is something that can be changed. I have to make sure I have a movement that has the right kind in there. But that's problematic. For sure. Sometimes metal fatigue is a real thing. I see it often. It's odd. But it does happen whether it's water intrusion or just age, over tightening, sometimes screws break, heads break right off. It has happened before. It will happen again. But hopefully we can take care of it without too much trouble. What's interesting is I don't think I actually turned that head. That's right, I didn't. I was taking this, I was taking the other bridge off. Now that I look at it, I, that was broken prior <laughs> to me touching it. That's so interesting. It popped off when the other bridge came off. Crazy. So that's been sitting there broken for I don't know how long. That's nuts. That's really crazy. 
Huh. Yeah, now that I think about it, it flew off when I took the chronograph bridge off. Let's take a look at your chronograph wheel over here. Oh yeah, that's in good shape. Ha ha ha. Interesting, I never touched it. <laughs> it had been broken for, for its life. Maybe it was broken from the factory. Who knows? That's nuts. Oh man. <laughs> Funny. I mean, not fun, but certainly interesting. Because we gotta fix it. Huh. Really interesting. Really interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, now we flip and take care of the calendar side. disk that will go over here and let's take off your plates it's nice and clean under here that's for sure very clean in fact I think that was broken some something oh, that's so interesting. Huh. Sorry, it just kind of surprises me that it sat there under the plate for you know 40 years and was broken. That's crazy. Oh, that's loose. Woo. Very loose. setting, levers, etc. Can and pinion. off the levers. I wonder why these blue over time. Some are blue, some don't. It's very interesting to me. 
the metallurgy of these parts. Okay, settle down. Parts and pieces. Let me go crisping right there. There we go. Okay. That is pointing in the right direction. That's good. Minute wheel. Ooh, that was loose. I think I loosened it though. Perhaps. Perhaps I did. I don't remember. Oh, sticky. Sticky, sticky. Old lubrication. Gets a bit sticky. Okay, that goes in the bath. There we go. And that is everybody. Okay, so now we're going to have to look at your main plate. Let's see about this post. Ooh. Mm -hmm. That one may need to come out from the top here. I'm going to find another one. Let's see if I have one. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll be back, hopefully, with some fixes. All right. Okay, Patrick. Well, I don't know if you remember, but uh, just a moment ago, we were talking about this broken screw head. Um, and what's interesting is that it was the screw that held down this plate, um, which wasn't the plate we were removing when it flew off. Uh, so that means that this screw had been broken for I don't know how long it goes right here well I was persistent and luckily these screws don't bottom out they don't actually tighten against a surface they tighten against this upper surface where the screw head is so that would go there um, and what's nice is that the the tap you know the actual threads go down further um, than the screw does and so as a consequence if it's a clean break and there's no residual issue if it's just that the head broke off then if you're careful and persistent you can actually remove the stud so I was able to do that which uh, saved you essentially a whole main plate it's very difficult because these do not have a means by which to push these uh, these out from the other side. It's a real challenge to get these out without totally screwing them up. Uh, so as a consequence, um, just a little bit of extra time and some patience and you get a screw. Now, while we're talking about metal fatigue and things that break, this will come back to you, which is nice. Unfortunately, as I was taking your pusher, which was terribly bent uh, and, and kinked, actually, as I was taking your seal off of your pusher, uh, it broke. And this is something that if these, and this is, I mean, it's bent to the point where actually the pusher itself is bent, this little cone here. This is badly bent, and this 
apparently had gotten crimped at some point. This is the weak point. This is right where the right where the seal goes. And you know, as soon as I went to remove that seal, off it came. So we have a new one coming. Um, that's okay. We'll get we'll get a new one put on. Um, I may just put a new set on um, so they match. They will be exactly this style with the knurls on the on the top. You won't be able to distinguish them. Uh, but um, this is, of course, one that is that's trash. It's coming back. So a couple little things, but nothing nothing major. Just uh, just some minor issues. Okay, we're still working. Hey, Patrick. Well, <laughs> uh, your watch is throwing me for a loop every opportunity it gets. Um, you have, uh, you know, this cool original bracelet. And uh, as, as with lots of things, um, you know, water is always the enemy uh, of, of movements and other things. But it turns out it can be the enemy of bracelets. <laughs> um, your spring bar was completely rusted into this uh, link here and I had to actually drill it out. <laughs> this is the this is the result. This is the what's left of your spring bar. Uh, I was able to take the ends off and get the get the spring out, but uh, the bar itself was like welded permanently to the inside of this, so I had to had to go in with the drill. Anyway, just thought I'd give you an update. It's it's always fun. Okay. Okay, Patrick. Well, uh, we are out of the cleaner. All of the things that need to be corrected have been. Um, everything's been lubricated. Well, pre-lubricated. Those pieces that can be uh, have been. And so now we can really get started with your reconstruction. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now let's go ahead and get rolling. Now let's go ahead and start with the under cal calendar plate side of things, which is different from the way I work on most of these. So most get the full train built prior to doing anything else. But with these, you got to build out the calendar side, the under calendar side, I should say. Okay, so now we have to lubricate. So
Anyway, so I'd like to do the keyless works. That goes good. All right, let's do your stem. And we can lubricate your winding pinion. Put that in first. Now, good. Good, get your yoke in. All right. So now let's lubricate this complex little beast. Oops, first, I oh, forgot your, your B2 needs to go in. Bones away. Right. Put your spring in. Okay. 
screws in. guide here. Let's make sure that this is lubricated a little bit. Just a very light touch. And that should do that. Now, let's lubricate center wheel, and your can of pinion should go on next after your minute wheel. Actually, let's do that the other way. Somehow, I just think this order is the right one. Less chance of messing up. There we go. All right. All right, so now we have to build out your minute or your hour recording wheel and its gears and things. Springs, levers, and all sorts of little complex doodads. It's a technical term. Doodad. There's your dancing man. Is your 
actual wheel towards the hour. And the operating lever for the reset. A tiny drop of lubrication on this. Help ease it. Next lever. Also, I should get a drop of lubrication on this hammer. It's effectively, what this is is a type of reset hammer. Okay, it gets a spring. Uh oh, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and get your spring in place. There it is. Very good. Okay, a few more pieces to put on. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate your can and pinion over your hour wheel. Put on your intermediary wheel. That's good. Okay, now your die shock. That's in. All right, so now we get to put your plate in place. Right. It's three screws which are distinct from all the others. They have a domed head instead of a flat head. Okay, now we have to align so that the power recording wheel goes through its access hole here. Let me get this in a slightly different orientation. There we go. OK. 
Okay. So the key is to ensure that everybody's flat and pressed in the right way. Everybody's got free motion. Yeah. The challenge is to make sure that when you press this plate home, or at least set it in place to begin with, you don't dislodge the our recording wheel from its pivot at the bottom because it is a very shallow pivot and it's very easy to just plop it sideways because the springs and everything that's holding it in place are uh, doing their best to pop it out. <laughs> they, don't, they don't work with you. They are in a sense working against you. Let's check function here. Reset lever should go against that heart, and we should see that keeper lever. Yep, move away. Perfect. Okay. All right, so now we can flip over and build your train of wheels. So let's do that. Looks good. All right. So the first thing is going to be a third wheel. Okay. Nothing left behind on the surface. Should drop right in here. And then I'm going to put in your escape wheel. After it gets a bit of an inspection. Okay, let's go ahead and put this one in. And now, your all important fourth wheel chronograph wheel drops in place. Good. And lubricate this, which is your winding intermediary gear. Which needs to be in place, or you can't hand wind. You should never forget that. Super important. All right, let's drop your barrel in. So, to put a little touch of lubrication here. Pretty good. Right. Top of your barrel. And we can drop your There we go. And that's what we want to see. A free running train. Now, as you remember, this was broken, but no longer.
good. Good, good, good. Let's get everybody lubricated. have to flip over and lubricate the other side before we complete the train of wheels but this is this is kind of where we want to be at the moment we're gonna go ahead and get your cover plate back on there we go apologize for the snoring as I always do, because they're always snoring. It's a constant, 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 constant. They win the Extreme Snoring Championship every year. Okay. A few drops of lubrication in these important spots. your wheel. Let's get your bushing in its proper location. screws in. You're going to get your click in place. Ratchet wheel. Good, good, good. All right, time for your levers. This one is the challenge. So it has to avoid being really close to the 
feel, but so it needs to. here. So it's always a bit of a bit of a challenge. There we go. Alright. Good. Looks good. One swipe of grease there. Make sure they're nice and happy at the junction point. Okay, now some springs, your hammer, and that's it. Plus some wheels. Good. Just lubricate your hammer. The faces here I need a touch of lubrication just to ensure ease of reset. Everybody's happy. Good. Put your spring on. Good. That is that. Right now, your minute recording wheel gets a tiny drop of lubrication. And unlike the six one three nines, these actually sit within a jewel. Let me check that real quick. Looks like it's. A little bit smudgy. Okay, don't need any interruptions there. intermediary wheel in place. And that is your chronograph built. You just need your bridge. Right. Clean and shiny. Ready to go. Oh, drop a little. Lubrication, of course. There we go.
Oops, come on. Do your thing. Let's get those screws in. I was unsure about your hammer and its ability to reset your chronograph wheel because when we started it was a little bit tricky. But check it now to be sure that it's in a good spot. Here we go. That's where it should be. Good. Okay. Put some power in here. Okay. That's good to see. That'll lubricate your Tools on the other side of your movement, of course. And put a little touch right in here. Okay, let's get these properly lubricated. it for that anyway. So let's put your pallet fork and your balance in place. Alright, so I've lubricated your pallet fork. It needs to go here. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the bridge. Good. 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 Excellent. 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 All right. So now we get to drop the balance. Here we go. Come on. There we go. Just needs a little, little encouragement. Alrighty, looks vigorous. That's what you want to see?
Okay, so let's get your die shock installed. And All right, and there we have it. Now we can see, see how we did. Just take a look. That's what we want to see. So, how are we doing? Okay, Patrick, well, we're looking good. Numbers are strong and consistent, and so it is time to get to your calendar works. Because we built out the, uh, the keyless works already, we're kind of in good shape to move forward with getting your dial and hands back on. So we'll be ready to go pretty soon. Okay. Alright, so let's do our little bit of lubrication that we have left. So that includes a little bit here for your jumper. Jumper needs a bit. All right, now for your calendar. So Millennium Falcon, just in from precisely. Okay, good. All right, with all of that, now we can put on your wheels here. So here's your tape wheel. That's good. <laughs> Just when you think you got it. Let's try that one more time. There we go. All right, now your plates go on.
Right now, we can put your table. Yeah, your C clip. That is how we do it. There we go. Perfect. Let's check your conventional turnover. There we go. Very nice. Good. All right, so that's it. Next is your dial in hands, and we'll be back. Okay, Patrick, well, last few things to install. Um, everything is looking really good. I've got your case rebuilt. Um, of course, we're going to have to wait a little bit on... I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, wait a little bit on the pusher uh, to replace yours. But uh, hopefully that won't be too long. But yeah, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. It would be nice if it was just just here and everything could go right back together but we are at the mercy of metallurgy sometimes bent metal has a tendency to snap which is unfortunate Winding weight. All right. Now we have to put your case back, back on. Okay, Patrick, there is something I wanted to go ahead and point out before I get your case back, back on. Um, I don't know if you can see this here, but this is definite pitting that has uh, this moisture that's gotten under your ceiling surface. Um, that is an ingress point for water, uh, and you have to be really careful. There's not anything we can really do about it. It's permanent to the case and it is one of your sealing surfaces. Now this new seal um, should be good, but I would be very, very wary of water. Um, keep this dry because that will be a point where water can get in. Okay. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that can be done about that. All right, well, let's take a look. Let's take a look 
Now, unfortunately, we don't have your bull heads, your pushers, but we do have a very nice 6138 that um, is beautiful. Well, I'll show you the reset function. As soon as that pusher comes in, I'll, I'll put it in and we'll be back in business. Um, but wow, what a stunning transformation. I mean, I think that that just came out so nice. Um, new crystal movement is running just at its best at the moment. It is really, really a great running watch. Um, you got all your functions here. You can turn over the day and date. By the way, this does reset properly. So unfortunately I just don't have any of the pushers in to reset. There's your date and day turnover. Let's do your quick date while we're here. So one pull and there's your date and your day. All right, so that is really nice to see. So we're gonna run a few tests. We're gonna just make sure everything is clean and running fine. And once we get your pusher back, uh, we'll be back to you. Now, a couple things. Um, have a little bit of discoloration on your dial here. I wasn't really willing to go too deep and uh, try and get that really uh, flat again. I think it's I think it's moisture that condensed and you know just over time it sort of did the number. Um, let's go over what we did work on. So let's take a look here. So we have a couple things. You got a bunch of old gaskets and seals. Got some screws. There's your pusher that broke. Unfortunately, it's just it was really badly bent. Uh, there's your screw head. Here's your old crystal and seal. Um, again, some little parts and pieces here. Seem to be quite sticky in the bottom. I don't know why. Okay. Well, regardless, lots of little parts and pieces. Um, you had. I'm going to send you home with uh, with two new um, uh, spring bars. One of them was welded to your <laughs> welded to your your bracelet. Um, I cleaned up your bracelet. It is it is a very loose loose bracelet. Uh, you know they make really nice aftermarket versions of this. Um, you may want to look into that. You know this has seen a long life, and these were never really all that industrial to begin with. There's a lot of play in this bracelet. I, I think it's a keepsake, but perhaps for wearing, um, you could probably find a really good aftermarket that would, uh, that would do it for you. Um, it's just, it's so stretched um, that it might be, might be unsafe to wear. But I will put it back on for the trip home. Um, all right, well, Patrick, um, thanks so much. For the opportunity to work on your watch it's been a real pleasure i think it came out just stunning these black faced bull heads are just really beautiful um, i'm gonna do one last little clip here at the end when i get your pusher so we can just show you the reset function uh, but otherwise fantastic all right thanks again i'll be in touch and we'll get your watch back to you